going on people? I wasn't gonna talk about this, but I had a little time and I was listening to all of the rhetoric and the craziness of the government shutdown. And today, something that caught me. I'm in Atlanta and the headquarters for the CDC is here. CDC workers furloughed, told not to come to work. USDA food inspectors furloughed, told not to come to work. Now, this is the reason I'm talking about this, because I didn't think it would get this far, because the debt ceiling at some point will be raised, because it has to, and Obamacare is law. This whole notion of not calling the session to put the money in play to reopen the government is going to bite the Republicans in the ass come next election for the following reason. There are many people, Republican, Democrat, who are getting hurt right here, right now. Do you understand that if a person misses a paycheck, one pay period, that could set them back for two or three months, taking them to catch up because of late fees and stuff? A lot of people are being seriously hurt by this, and they are not going to forget it because it's painful. People who have done nothing wrong are out of work. But that's my rant on that. Just my thoughts, because it is preposterous. It is beyond asinine. So if you are a hustler and this is going on, what would you do? But before we get into that, check out my Hustler University special. I'm making this one time special offer. And it's currently $29.95. It will go up to $60 after this campaign, which ends Sunday. You get one month free of Hustler University and this badass t-shirt. Click the bar below to get in on the action. Trust me, it's worth it. And you get a cool ass t-shirt out of the deal. I've been thinking because I haven't turned on the news. Like I said, I really haven't kept up with it. And I thought, why aren't you all like freaked out by this like so many people? And the answer to that question goes back a long, long time. When I had my contract furniture office business, uh, yeah, contract office furniture business, there we go. A guy approached me from a larger firm because you know, if you didn't notice, I'm, I'm actually black. And he said, let's partner on this deal. And I was like, what deal? And it was a government job and they had put out an RFP. Since I was a kid, I have assiduously avoided government programs, um, government proposals, RFP. And a lot of people, black, white, green, Asian, whatever, Indian, have made a lot of money utilizing these contracts because it's open. And if you have what they want and you can earn the contract, God bless you. But it wasn't for me. And I told him immediately, I said, no, nah, I'll pass. And he said, you're sure? I was like, yeah, I mean, it's a lot of money, man. I mean, you know, this could be a three-year project. Because the thing is, the RFP put that there must be minority participation to get that job. And he needed a shell company to run the job through. Because, I mean, what he offered me was pretty much about, you know, maybe 80 grand a year for three years. And I didn't have to do anything except sign some papers and show up for a few meetings. And I turned it down because that wasn't my thing. You can go all through my background and you will not see me part of any government sponsored program or anything. And there's a reason. At some point, when you do that stuff, you get caught up in the matrix in a way that you can't get out of. Number one, you become dependent upon that government money. Luxuries once tasted become necessities. I know a lot of people that did really well, government contracts, made a lot of money, and there are still people who are doing that very thing, making a lot of money with their government contracts. I'm not messing with it. I devoted myself, my efforts to the private sector. And the reason is government shutdown, no government shutdown, private sector keeps on trucking. If you're a hustler, you may not even be concerned. You may like be me because, you know, I'm sitting here. I'm thinking about my next project. I'm thinking about my next develop. I'm looking at my goal sheet. I am not really thinking about this. But what, like I said, what got me was the CDC was shut down. 
Now, see, this is the thing that's getting kind of stupid. Now, so I wasn't going to talk on it, but I have to, to make this next point. That's going to impact everyone. I mean, it, it is so stupid. But I started thinking, okay, what will the hustler do in this situation? I started thinking, this kind of goes back into why I rebranded this channel. How to make a living without a job. Because this thing, if it continues to go on, I don't have a crystal ball. My gut instincts telling me in the 11th hour, they'll come in and do what they need to do. And a whole bunch of people are going to be pissed off because they could have did this weeks ago. This could have been done a few years ago. The Republicans kept saying, hey, every, we're going to keep this having this conversation every few years. And then they hold everyone hostage to push something through that just isn't going to happen. And I was like, OK, I'm a hustler. I'm building my own community. I'm building my own network. I'm building my own economy. So I'm doing what a hustler would do. I, I've, I've, I don't really spend a lot of time chatting on Facebook anymore because it's a waste of time. But I do monitor it. And I've seen a lot of people talking about it. A lot of people kind of wringing their hands. And, you know, like, take Obamacare. If you don't get it it's like a 95 dollar penalty most of you have spent more than that amount of money on dinner so really in turn now if it was like a six thousand dollar penalty or something like that okay i could feel you but when you really look at it even if you don't follow through you pay the penalty and life goes on you pay more than that for car insurance so people are not thinking that's what's going on People are not thinking. They're reacting. A hustler would be thinking, how can I make money from what's going on? Because right now there are people out there who are hurting. There are people, there's, I'm telling you, you know, like I said, I hope, gut instinct, 11th hour, they solve this. But what if they don't? What if these people who are so crazed with power let us go not to the fiscal cliff, but over it and slap into the fiscal seat. Do you know what kind of upheaval that would create for people with regular income situations? For hustlers, it could be an opportunity to become rich. Wells Fargo, one of the oldest uh, banks in the country. Guess how Wells Fargo grew? They bought up defunct thrifts during the Great Depressions. They absorbed them because they had a solid balance sheet. They became one of the oldest and most powerful banks in the world during the Great Depression. Don't believe me. Look it up. It's very easy to find. So a hustler would say, hey, there's all this stuff that's going on. There's uncertainty. Uh, people are scared. What would a hustler do? Start asking yourself these kind of questions. Because the economy is very tricky right now. It's a little weird. You have people who are doing amazingly well, and you have a lot of people who aren't. You have people with degrees who are working at Starbucks, and this is not some kind of slight of Starbucks, a job's a job. But, you know, you didn't go to school and get sixty dollars to $100,000 in debt to work at Starbucks. That wasn't the goal. All this stuff is going on. I did a video, the new lower, the new educated lower class. What people fail to understand is automation, technology, it's knocking jobs out quicker than they can be replaced. Premium jobs, and I would consider a premium job as ADGs and above, those are going to be very hard to get for the average person. You will have to have the skill sets, the pedigree, and the network. You could be very talented. You can have the pedigree, but if you don't have the network, you're not getting in. There's so many variables to that. So if you're a hustler right now, are you scared? Are you shaking in your boots? Are you like shaking your lamb, sheep, wool, like, ah, are you going, hmm, this is really interesting. Well, I was in the military and we used to do mock war exercises. I used to notice something. The DIs, 
when they're like, you know, throwing smoke grenades, not real grenades, and you know, they were walking around as calm as could be. I was in the military when we still had a uh, Vietnam era, you know, soldiers still in the military. And one of them was my first sergeant. And he was just walking around and, uh, and then we also had live sh uh, ammo uh, suppressor fire overhead. And he was just walking around as calm as could be. And when I was leaving, because, you know, just the way he was so calm, it, it left an impression on me. And when I was leaving uh, basic training to go to my IT, I you know, requested to talk to him. And it was really cool because after uh, basic training, you know, the drills and stuff, everybody was super cool and they talked to you. And I was like, I noticed during those exercises, you were so calm. And he told me about his experiences in Vietnam and he learned something. They were in the firefight because he had to come back patch and they were ambushed by some guerrillas. And he noticed that was he was with this crazy guy and he said this guy was so calm. And he's like, why are you so calm? And the guy said, there is the ability to think in chaos can save your life. And he's like, just calm down. And they started, you know, instead of reacting, they started thinking and they found a way that they were able to defeat these gorillas, kill them all. And they were outnumbered like, you know, three to one because they were able to think in the midst of madness. And that left an impression on me. And when I got that information, I was 18. I wasn't mentally mature enough to really get it. I didn't get it until much later in life. So with what's going on, if you have the ability to remain calm, the ability to think, the ability to come up with a plan right now with all this madness that's going on, you can have a fantastic life while other people are losing their freaking minds. I'm telling you, it is possible because I'm looking at how things go. I live in a neighborhood that's pretty well to do. And I used to live in the hood. And I'm very aware of my surroundings. And when I'm out and about, I just noticed the conversations are different. I was in the gym today. And this guy was like talking about a deal. And it's like, well, if we structure it this way, it's 80,000. If we structure it, this is just common conversation in the gym. When I was in the hood, it was about how to get some pussy. And I was just sitting there like, okay, why are these conversations different? Because people who have learned how to create their own economy frequently have gone through some extremely hard times. Extremely. Divorce, uh, illness, damn near death. And they were able to keep it together. Maybe they lost it, rebuilt it up. It, you just get a certain kind of confidence that you will be okay no matter what. You will seriously get this confidence because when I was in my dark hour and, you know, my mom said I can come back home. And I told her over the phone, it's like, I'm going to figure this out. If I come back home, I may never leave again. I don't want to be one of those people that move back in with their parents and they're 40, 50 years old, still living with mom and dad because they've abandoned their dreams. They gave up. They tapped the fuck out. I didn't want to be that person. So when I started remaining calm and started to really, really, really think, I'm talking about think, not react, not go woe is me, but to really, really think, I changed my financial circumstances in six months. I was in a three-year period, two years and six months of financial duress, mental un, you know, insanity. I was nuts at that time. I mean, when you were poor, you're not just fiscally poor. Other things are often missing. That's why back in the day when people were poor and they still had community, they had friends and family, they didn't go nuts because they still had other valuable things. But when you're completely ass out, where you don't have friends, you don't have family, you don't have money, it can drive you insane. And just six months of really being calm in chaos, I quadrupled my income, moved, experienced a much better life because I started to think under pressure. That's why I'm asking you, as a hustler, what would you do right now? As a hustler, not as a husband, 
a wife, a student, but a hustler, an opportunist, a stunch opportunist. What would you do? What service would you create? What, what would you do? Because the opportunity is out there, and this is why the opportunity is out there. People are heavily distracted because they're talking about this stuff. People are going, you know, the government needs to do this. I have taken this position that I need to look out for me. And I've taken it a very hard, hard uh, stance with that. So I don't get overly wrapped up with Obamacare and all these other things because what I know from business, there's always a way. There's always a loophole. There's always something because this system is built on loopholes, trap doors, escape hatches. That's how it's built. So if you remain calm and start to think and ask yourself, what can I do? What can I provide? What can I build? Because everyone's distracted. And this is something else. I recently uh, was enrolled in an online YouTube course. And, you know, the big thing was make your video short, make your video short, make your video short. That, that was just preach. I've never followed that uh, line of thought. This is going to be a long ass video. And will most people watch it? Nope, they will not. Will some people watch it? Yes. Will some people watch it? Like me, subscribe? Yes. Will some people actually eventually buy products? Yes. I'm speaking to those people. Because see, this is the thing that you have to understand. When you ask yourself, what will a hustler do? I am crafting and creating a message and products for certain people, not everyone. And when you realize that you have the ability to do that, because the big thing is, and I've many, many years of uh, experience in business, I can honestly tell you all money is not good money. There are some customers who are in this infernal pain in the ass and you just want to throw their money back at them and say, get the fuck away from me because they're not worth it. And I'm talking about I had a sixty thousand dollar customer. I did just that. It hurt. It hurt me for two months. But I was just like, I can't deal with you because it was always that mm, mm, just if they could press your flesh an inch inward, they they run back in the wall and come at you at 100 miles an hour to try to get another centimeter. That kind of person couldn't stand him. And, you know, that's just business. Some people play the game that tight and hard. But I don't really like engaging with those folks because I think it's a mania. And I just like, hey, here's the contract. Take your money back. I didn't cash your check. You have a nice life. And some people thought it was crazy, but... Building an economy and asking yourself certain questions, you get to have choice. You get to have a lot of choice on what will happen with you, what you will do with your life, how you will run your business. Because as many of my longtime subscribers know, I will say fuck you in a heartbeat because I understand this message is not for everyone. And I won't even give you that, well, if I can just meet one person, it's no, that's bullshit to me. This message is going to reach way more than one person. It's going to resonate with someone and they're going to start saying, what as a hustler would I do? How can I figure out my way to a better life? What can I do? When you start asking, what can I do versus they should do this, uh, that they should do this. Someone should fix it. The someone who should fix it is you. You need to fix your life. You need to be responsible for your life, your money, your economy. Because understand this, it's 2013. We are on the precipice of so much change. There was a conversation on Facebook the other day. Someone was talking about how watches were played. And I just started laughing. I'm a watch guy, love watches, watch collector. So I, I really know that market well. And I knew that a sports, you know, sports watches have hit the billion dollar mark and they will continue to grow. And why? Because people who are triathletes, runners, you can't have the phone. You need to be able to do what you need to do. The watch is just more efficient for those activities. And I knew those, that watch sector was gone because, you know, some people think watches are going to disappear. They're not. There's a certain group of people who will always wear a watch. Uh, you know, and certain things that came out, people wearing high end watches that don't work because, you know, it's bling bling. I've seen people do shit like that. I'm never like that. I know how to go get uh, behind me to throw in the battery if I needed one. But most of my watches have been automatic, so I never had that problem. But the whole deal is there are people who think that certain markets are dead because they are not in that market.
and they have no interest in that market. I'm here to tell you, here on YouTube, there's like thousands of different markets. If you start asking yourself, what can I do? How can I make that better? How can I be part of that? How can I, as a hustler, facilitate some cheddar in my life versus someone needs to give me a job? Someone need, They need to make more jobs. No, motherfucker, you need to create your own job. I didn't say this when I did the, the Green Myth video. I wouldn't, you know, it's like, hey, you know, you know, I, I did a video on how to drop out of college like a boss because the student loan thing is tricky. You know, just, you know, accumulating a lot of student loans and then dropping out, you immediately will start that student loan clock. So it's not just wise to drop out without a plan. Because that's what I did. I was in school, but I had a job. I didn't just drop out into nothing. And I didn't have any student loans either. So the whole deal is, as you start to ask yourself the most salient questions, what can you bring to the market? Keep asking yourself that. Make it an exercise. Take pen, paper, and every day sit down and say, what can I do? What can I make? What can I create? What can I do that will change my life? What can I bring to the market? Because the thing is, everybody can bring something to the table. Everyone has something. I don't know what it is, but everyone has something. Because when you look at what's going on right now, and if you are scared, you are frightened, that means that you're highly dependent on too many other people. And I'm not talking about customers, because you know, first someone who thinks they're really smart class is like, well, Glendon, you're dependent on my customers. True. But you're dependent upon everyone. You're dependent upon a boss. You're dependent on someone to think for you. You're dependent on someone to provide content. You're dependent on someone to hold your dick while you piss. There's a different level of dependency here. I create products and I am dependent upon my customers to buy them. But I created something. And this is something else too. When you reach a certain level of creation, you never have to worry about money. I want you to think about all of these stores in your town, old stores, where the owner had the foresight to buy the building. That is incredibly huge for a business that if you can actually own your own real estate, that may be more important than the business in the building. That's how a lot of these old businesses, these stores that you've known, you go back home, they're still open because dude bought the building. He's not paying the mortgage. He's not paying rent. It totally changes the ball game. Totally. They created their own economy. That's why in the movies, there's always this one guy who owns the town and he's a business person. Always a business person. Not the judge. Not the sheriff. It's the business man or the business woman who owns the town. Every time in every movie, always the business person. You think those people in Washington, the senators and the Congress people are running this country? You're, you're stupid. It's the business people who are running the country. Because see, this is the thing. You get the money first, then you get the power. Power without money doesn't last long. Business people know this. That's why certain laws are pushed through. That's why certain things continue to happen because business people run the country. So knowing that with the hustler mindset, what would a hustler do instead of going, oh, they're fucking up the country. We need to take back the country. All that bullshit talk. If you were serious about taking back the country, the first thing you would do would get yourself a business. Because when you get yourself a business, you give yourself economic power, which is the highest level of power in this country. Not walking in the street asking for them to, hey, will you give me the power back? And they're not going to give it to you, fool. It's not happening. It's not getting that back. Because you gave it away for comfort. So you create your business. You start looking out for yourself. You start to think differently. Because when you understand that it's business people that run this country and you have the hustler mindset, the most immediate answer that's going to pop up in your gray matter is I need to become a business person. 
And there are many people like, nah, I don't want to do it, too much work. <sighs> I just want to smoke blunts and get high on the weekends and just chill. Can we just chill? The price of freedom is very expensive. It's extremely expensive. So you can be comfortable or you can be free. I choose to be free. It's worth the price to me. Question is, is it worth the price to you? Because when you learn this and you see what's going on, all of this stuff, this doom and gloom, this people were talking, because there's a guy on Facebook, and I'm not gonna say his name because he's a good friend. He got all caught. He he for, I was proud of him. I was so proud of him because he stopped the doom and tune, the doom and gloom talk, focused on his business, made more money than he ever did before in a down economy. Because he focused on his business versus focusing on the distraction dropped knowledge in the news cycle. That stuff's not there accidentally. It's there to keep you distracted and riled up. Because if you start to think, you start to come up with plans, you start to activate your hustler mindset, you're not like freaking out. Because this is my thing. I said in another video. Are we going to have a shit hits the fan scenario? No, we're not. We're going to have high pockets where people will be in extreme poverty. Oh, that's coming. That's in some places that's already here. Oh, that's coming. We're going to have two classes. Those who really have it and those who really don't. That's coming. And you got a choice on where you want to be. This isn't India where you're born in the caste system. This is the United States of America, baby. You can climb from the ghetto, the trailer trash, and go to the fucking White House if you want to play that game. And if you don't want to go to the White House, you can go to a point where you have your own farmland. You have your own world. You know, you can have your own Wally's world. That is the beauty of this country. America's citizenship is a wonderful thing, and many people take it for granted. You can go from nothing to something in five years. It's out there. 2013, it'll be there for 2014. It'll be there in 2020 for those who are willing to be aware. Because, see, this is the thing. When you start talking doom and gloom, when you start talking, oh, there's nothing you can do about the government, you have put too much faith in other people and not enough in yourself. When you start saying, hmm, I can figure this out. I can make a way. You see, I'm going to tell you where I draw strength from. When you go back to the period of slavery in the United States of America, you had people who were black who started businesses, started schools, churches. This was when breathing as a black person was dangerous. And these people thrived. Those are my heroes. Those are my heroes because that was incredibly risky and hard to do. And they did it. So I look at myself and I don't have those barriers. I don't have those restrictions. I don't have any of those things holding me back. None of that stuff. Yet you have many people who have mental prisons around their minds and their perspective who think that those things still exist. I see it all the time. It's like, yeah, it's still 1812. No, the fuck it's not. It's not 1812. It's not even close to 1812. See, this is the thing that a lot of people don't really understand about America and slavery. There were a lot of white slaves. There were a lot of white indentured servants. There was a lot of white people who got caught up in that shit and they were just as bad off as slaves. I know black people are like, no, no, it wasn't like that. Oh, yes, it was. If you study history, you would know this. America has fucked over a lot of people in terms in its history. Black people, uh, Chinese people, Native Americans, the list is long. But if you study world history, that shit is common around the world. Every culture has this kind of history. At some point, every culture, not just America, but slaves all around the world. Right now, there are still slaves. Human trafficking is huge in most of the world. If you are a pretty little girl and you're going off to like Brazil and you go into an alley by yourself, you might become someone's bitch in India. For real. This is happening right now. And there is no coming back to America until they get tired of you. Then they may ship your ass back home. This is happening. This is very real. 
That's why I'm talking to you and saying, what will the hustler do? Because we as Americans have so many benefits, so many opportunities that most of the world does not have. That's why there's a line to get over here. People are like, you know, like I said, I've got friends in other parts of the world and I'm, I'm getting real time information. You know, people are like, yeah, I'm going to go to this country. I'm leaving America. America's fucked up. Where the fuck are you going? Most of the world has a fucked up situation right now. There's a few places that this is nicer or this is better. But hands down, across the board, from a benefit, quality of life, there are few places that can compare and rival the United States of America. A few, maybe a handful. And I guarantee you, you need loot to live there. Loot. And also, if you're not a native of the land and you don't know how the government works, you can get fucked in ways that you can't even imagine. And ain't shit you can do about it. Here, you have recourse. A lot of recourse. So, ask yourself, I'm a hustler. What am I going to do? How am I going to facilitate this stuff? Ask yourself that question over and over again. Take responsibility for you and yours. And then things begin to change. Things become more clear. Things aren't so dark and lugubrious and gloomy. And, and you start thinking, hey, there's opportunity here. Whenever I had that, because I don't really get those down days or those crazy days because, you know, I've been homeless. I've literally been on the fucking streets. And I go back to that experience and I managed to get out of that experience without a tenth of the skill sets knowledge base that I currently have. I can go to another city and start up from scratch and be cool. As long as it's a certain size. I mean, if I'm out there in the country in the hills, you know, I might have to go ahead and uh, get me some propane business or something. But in a major city, oh no, I'll be good. I know this. I've done it as an, an experiment once. Didn't tell y'all about that. So the whole deal is ask yourself what you can do and start experiencing the life of a hustler take chances get out there and do something i'm saying go out there and fail then examine why you fail and what happens boom knowledge base increase you go out there and fail again boom knowledge base increases boom it, it just gets bigger 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 if you play it safe and don't do anything and don't take any chances you may not get hurt. You may be very safe. You may be very comfortable, but you will not get the rich rewards of risk. It's not happening. Zuckerberg pulled one of the oldest scams in history and he became a billionaire. He took some of the property that wasn't properly legally protected and got away with it. Had to pay off some, you know, some basically chump change. Um, uh, what was that? Fees are a war, the chump change of war compared to what he's worth now. That was chump change. It was like, yeah, it was worth it. <laughs> so understand the game is not dirty because, you know, that that saying don't hate the player, don't hate the game. I actually have stopped using that and I replaced it with don't hate the player, don't hate the game, learn the fucking rules so you can win because understand it's a system. This whole thing that we're in, it's a system. You can win if you take the chance to get out there and learn the system. It is just that simple. I'm telling you, and I have a lot of stories of people who three or four years ago, they didn't really have anything or they were working jobs, they hated. Now they're, you know, resale hustlers or hustling doing this and they're making the same money they were making with a job in a lot of cases uh, there's actually a guy in one of my groups he hit six figures for the first time in his life that was a beautiful moment it was fucking awesome so understand this was recent this was this year he went through some hardship he actually lost their property and he built it back up because he got that hustler mindset because see this is the thing that many of you fail to understand there are no magic jelly beans there is no Superman coming to save your ass. You have to dig deep inside your own chest, pull out your own fucking Superman, Wonder Woman, whoever the fuck you need, and be your own superhero. You live in the United States of America. That's very possible for you to become your own superhero overnight. 
It's possible. I'm looking at some of my friends from high school and I was recently popped on one friends and she started like a, a pyro, a fireworks business. And I was just like, that, I did a little research. Those people make bank. You know, she's a regular person. She took a risk. She took a chance. She built into a thriving enterprise. There are so many ways for you to make money. So many ways. You just got to open yourself up to it because I'm not coming to you from some grand platform. I've actually worked in a landfill. I've poured hot tar on a roof. I've taken the rakes and smoothed out the gravel. I've been burnt by that shit. I've worked in the field. I've picked vegetables. I have. Oh, one of my favorite jobs was throwing ice. When I was in that crazy situation i would go to the labor pool there was two there was a uh, labor force labor ready you had to be there at four fucking 30 in the morning to get out and then i met this guy named gene he had an ice truck i didn't know people who sold ice made that much money so from like you know six in the morning to around 3 30 we throw ice we we would go pick up the ice at the ice distribution place and um actually it was not too far from old national then we'd go around town fill up these ice bins and I lost fucking 30 pounds because ice, five pounds at a time. Because, I mean, Gene, he liked to work. I mean, he was just like freaking workaholic. Bought an ice truck. I mean, yeah, you know, ice. Dude was making like seven G's a week. This was in the early 90s. I mean, well, late 90s. Seven G's a week. Ice. Ice. I saw the money. Got paid in cash a lot of times. I mean, you know, a little skinny dude, and he had like a wad like this, and he just peel off and pay me because after a while I left the labor ready, and I just worked directly with him, and he picked me up, and that went on for like nine months. You know, it, it, it was just a weird job. I met a lot of people. That was part of the journey. Because the thing is, I have had a ton of shit jobs. And some people are like, you know, there's no such thing as a shit job. Please. There's a such thing as a shit job, and I had them. And I did them well. And I learned from each one. Because the ice thing, it taught me about distribution. It taught me about wholesale. And see, I didn't know I was getting these lessons. I was just throwing ice and absorbing the information. I learned so much working with him in eight months. It was ridiculous. Throwing ice. So, you know, there, there are folks who don't like when folks like, you know, blow their own horn or say certain things. And I just look at all of the shit that I went through that most of you haven't even gone through. I think there are some of my viewers who have gone through much worse. But I know most of you haven't. You haven't had to work like a Hebrew slave for like six bucks an hour, 12 hours. And you start factoring. It's like, okay, you start looking at your life in terms of hours. Okay, my room rent is 125 bucks. If I can push this whole day, and I get two days with Gene. That's room rent. All right, two days is room rent. Another two days, that's food. And that's, oh, shit, Friday, I got extra money. That's how I was looking at it because I was a wage slave. I didn't work for value. I worked per hour for money. Didn't understand that because if I had the hustler mindset, I wouldn't have been with Gene for eight months. No, 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 no. I would have been with Gene for one month. Then I would have went out and got some investors and got another fucking ice truck and I would have been his competition because see I had you know if that's what the hustler mindset does for you one month I would learn everything I learned everything I needed to know to start a business in a month but because I was mentally a wage slave I never thought past I work for hours and I get that check or you know he paid me in cash and then I go along my merry way and enjoy my free time then the me now if I had a job like that, two weeks, four weeks, in, out, okay, this is how it works. These are the connects. It, it would be a totally different ball game because that's called evolution. And I wouldn't have got to this place in my life if I didn't take those risks. I mean, that's what I did. Once I woke up, took ownership, started asking, what can I do? What do I need to learn? How can I make it better? What can I do? Shit changed because I changed. 
because that gene experience was right before Scheme Incorporated where I created my own reference and got a serious job. I started thinking like that. Gene actually, I will give him credit because Gene was a hustler. Gene had the hustler mindset like nobody I know. This dude was balling for real. He didn't even look like it. He was totally balling. And I thought about it. That pretty much was you know, the uh, strike point when my hustler Ma said, because I had Earl Nightingale lead the field, the power of subconscious mind. Then I worked with Gene and I worked very hard. I worked really, really hard. Cause Gene, it's like, let's go. The more ice that we drop, the more money it would make. Push, 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 push. I didn't realize until I started doing this video that Gene actually prepared me for Renegrate because I went from push, push, push to push, push, push even harder. So I was already mentally kind of in that spot, that space as I think about it. And it's just like, damn. So this is what happens when you put yourself out there, when you start to ask questions and go out and experiment. Recently, uh, you know, you're going to see a lot of t-shirts from me because it's something I've always wanted to do. And I finally have come across the right platform because I've, you know, I've done eBay, I've done Amazon. I understand why there are so many people who are like doing the happy dance with Amazon FBA because fulfillment is a bitch. And with t-shirts, that's always been the, the big thing because I didn't, I'll, I'll be straight up with you. I don't want to ship shit else again in my life. I want to automate that. I don't want to touch. I don't want to wrap. I, you know, I may do a little shipping for, you know, some of the people in the hustler mindset, you know, I'll probably ship them something, but I remember weeks wrapping up 30, 40, 50 packages a day for weeks at a time. That shit is tiring. Creating boxes to fit irregular items, going to FedEx, UPS. Sometimes the post office was cheaper. I mean, you wrap the package and you scan rates. I was so glad when we got a merchant, a commercial account that ended a lot of that crap. So understand my beginning was with resale. But that's not the end because I looked at it because, you know, a lot of people like, you know, you know, you're not a reseller, blah, 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 blah. And the thing is, I'm making money, bitch. That's the goal. I don't care how I make it as long as I make it legally and ethically. I don't care what's the source. And when I let that go, because I was so focused on that storage auction business, it was just because I was in love with it. I must admit I was in love with it. I have a high curiosity level and I got to ramble through so many people's stuff. I got to read love letters. I got to watch homemade porn. I got to learn people's deepest, darkest secrets every day of the week. That shit was a high. So that was my thing. But as I go on and I stack up those experiences as I ask myself, what will I do as a hustler now? The game changes because I've changed. I don't, like I said, I don't want to ship. Uh, you know, I looked at doing Amazon FBA. I don't want to do that. And it's not because it's bad. It's because I can do other things because I'm a creative person. I have this huge repository of all of this shit that I got out of storage units. That's stories for years. Then, you know, between what? Elementary school and high school, I read like 4,000 books. All that stuff's in there. Then the new stuff. Then the YouTube stuff. So, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm moving in that arc of where I've always wanted to be. And I just didn't know it, if that makes any sense. So you're going to see a lot of crazy stuff here. But hands down, if you watch this channel and you buy the products and you get in the Hustle University, uh, the Hustler Mindset Project, you know, it's two different things now. You're going to learn how to be better as a person. And you're going to have to learn how to activate your hustler mindset, because let me clear some up. There are many people who want what I call push button advice, push button, yield certain result, which is great. And it's wonderful, but it doesn't last because if you're selling push button advice, at some point it loses its value. But if you're selling how to be creative, how to innovate, how to market, how to be a better person. You're creating your own economy. 
from your perspective, from your attributes, from the special talents and abilities that you have that someone else can't just duplicate. That's very powerful stuff. That's the better way. That's what I'm trying to give you because understand resale is limited. When you get to 1500 uh, sales a month, eBay, Amazon, and you're shipping that shit yourself, you are, you are overwhelmed. You're overwhelmed. You're going to be about one something, hundred some thousand, maybe 200,000 gross sales. And that's it. You're not going any higher. Then, you know, you can fill up Amazon FBA. Oh, wait, you're sourcing. Wait a minute. You're the only one that's sourcing you. Bam. Sealing again. See, as long as it's you and you do not create systems and you do not exploit the system that is out there, you will keep hitting ceilings. When you start saying, hey, I'm a hustler and I can control stuff, there's no ceiling. There's no ceiling. As long as you are the hustler, you are the reseller, you are the picker, you're the storage auction guy, you, 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 ceiling, 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 ceiling. You will reach a point where you cannot make any more money because you only have so much time and energy. When you get to the point where I'm at of joystick hustler and you start controlling stuff because I'm telling you this new platform that I'm doing the t-shirts on I'm in love with it I love it and if I was the, the me that I was when I was working with Gene I would think it was a nuisance I would think it's too much work I would think oh god I gotta do all this because now I know better I'm like oh we're gonna have a good time and we're gonna make a lot of money we're gonna make a lot of money and you can be like that. You can do stuff. You can make a lot of money. Say it with me. I can make a lot of money. You can. Many of you don't even say those things because, oh God, you know, you should just be happy with what you have. You shouldn't ask for more. That's just not humble. No. That's some bullshit. I'm telling you. I, I grew up in Alabama and that's a common, just be happy. That's part of the matrix indoctrination, if you didn't know, from the Protestant work ethic, the idle hands of the devil's workshop. That's to keep your indentured, indoctrinated ass working for the man, not for yourself. That is the ultimate Jedi mind trick and most people don't even know it. When you wake up, when you experience ownership, power and control of your life, it's very intoxicating. It's very hard to let go. You can't go back to bullshit. It's like when you're dating someone that is absolutely wonderful, then you meet someone who's subpar, you like, mm, forget you. You can't do it. You can't do it. <laughs> you just can't. That's what it's like when you finally kind of understand some stuff. You just can't go back to BS. You can't do it. So I hope a lot of you will take this year to wake up, watch the videos, absorb some stuff, and ask yourself these salient questions. What can I do as a hustler? How can I make it better? Fuck government shutdown. Fuck all of this stuff because I know people, I have products, I have services, they need it. It's not going to cost an arm and a leg. and I can sell my products and services to these people and make not just an okay living or a regular living, but a freaking outstanding living. Do you know if you had a product and you only had 5,000 customers, you could become a multimillionaire? It's not everybody in the world. It's not everybody. You could have a region or a city and get 5,000 customers and become a multimillionaire. See, this is what happens when you learn to think, when you learn to add and subtract. Just do the math. Do this exercise. Come up with a product that has a cost of $25. That's your cost to build, whatever. And you can sell it for $100. Now ask yourself, how many customers do you need to become a millionaire? And it is not as many as you think. It will shock you. All right, this is Glendon Cameron, and I'll see you on the good side.